Well, good evening to you all, and welcome to our midweek devotion uh, from Northside Community Church in Harare. It's uh, 8th of September tonight. You know, the teaching last Sunday was titled Eternity Focused Grief. And so this is what our series on death, grieving, and the glory of God has been leading us into. And we do have a final sermon in the series next Sunday, so please be sure to join us for that as well. So in the first two weeks, when we looked at death, we saw that the first humans, and that's Adam and Eve, living in the amazing Garden of Eden had a choice. They could eat from any of the trees in the garden, but if they ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, they would die. Now they actually made a very bad choice by eating from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And the world has lived with the consequences of that ever since. And so this is why we live with death in our world. And then during the next two weeks we were given some very practical and helpful teaching on how to deal with the grief that follows death. So firstly we need to share our grief and we need to receive comfort from others. And then secondly we also need to invite the Lord into our grief. You know, grief is normal and natural and we heard in one of the devotions uh, one of these midweek devotions about the cycle of grief that we all need to work through and the emotions that we will be experiencing are and these can happen in different uh, times and they overlap a bit we can uh, feel denial we can feel anger we can feel depressed we can bargain and then finally there will be acceptance and we can also struggle with blame and with guilt but so last Sunday we looked at eternity focused deep a grief and the scripture used was 1 Thessalonians verses uh, chapter 4 verses 13 to 18 now in verse 13, Paul starts by saying, Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be ignorant about those who sleep in death, so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. And so I would just like to highlight that phrase, we do not want to be ignorant. If we remain ignorant of God's rescue plan in Christ, then we have no hope. And if we have no hope, this deepens our grief. But ignorance can also cause fear. And fear is one of the reasons we are reluctant to talk about death. And as long as we don't do that, as long as we avoid it, the fear remains. We are then trapped in that fear and we do not have peace. So in 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 14, Paul states something which he knows. And he says there, we believe that Jesus died and rose again. And so for the, the apostles who wrote the Gospels, and for Paul, these were facts. These are first-hand experiences and eyewitness accounts by the ones who were actually there. You know, the, the apostles lived with Jesus. They saw his crucifixion. And then he met with them after his resurrection. So, Paul also 
he encountered the resurrected Jesus on the road to, uh, to Damascus. And so these, are, these events are facts, and they're also recorded by the historians of the time. But to move on from the facts of the death and the resurrection of Jesus, there is no one, no doctor, no professor, no psychologist, or any science who knows about what happens after death. So if we want to find out, to try to understand about that, we have to go to the source, to the, the Creator, to God Himself, and what He reveals to us through His Word. You know, the Bible is God's revelation, and as Sam preached on Sunday, there are many truths in it for us about what happens after death. And the remaining verses in the passage of 1 Thessalonians 4, that's verses 15 to 18, uh, deal with this. And they were covered last week at the, uh, by Sam. So if you've not heard that sermon, I would encourage you to do this. But in addition to this, for me, there are also some very revealing and encouraging words uh, from Jesus himself, which have been recorded for us. And so, to the thief on the cross, and this is in uh, Luke 23, verse 43, he says, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise and then to his disciples in John 14 verse 2 uh, Jesus says <clears throat> my father's house has many rooms if that were not so would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you and so also encouraging is what Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and this is a long chapter which can be divided into three sections and uh, those three sections are about the resurrection of Christ and then the resurrection of the dead and then finally the resurrection body and so this is a chapter you should spend time reading and understanding. It tells us what we need to know about what follows death. And Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 15 verses 51 and 52. He says, listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed in a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. And so when Paul says there, I will tell you a mystery, what he is saying is that this is not something that we can know otherwise you know he knew it because it was revealed to him personally by Jesus and so just as we conclude tonight we saw that it is in hope it is the hope that we have which can see us through the grief of loss which many have experienced in the last 18 months or so. Many of us have lost loved ones, relatives and friends in the pandemic. In the pandemic. And we've also been shocked at hearing about tragic accidents and untimely deaths as well. In the beginning, Adam and Eve had a choice. They had two options. 
they could believe and trust God or they could disobey. And today we individually have two choices. We can either believe in Jesus or we can reject him. We heard last Sunday that the choice to believe in Jesus, to believe in his res resurrection, to believe that he will come again and in the promises that brings means that we will have eternal life. To fail to make that choice or to reject him or to ignore him is as bad as the choice that Adam and Eve made. It is a path that leads to eternal death and separation from God. But the choice to believe in Jesus will change the way we live our lives now and also for the remainder of our time on earth. And so if you do that, you will find yourself having a fulfilled, a satisfied and a service-filled life. And I think the service-filled life is something we will hear about on Sunday. So let me just close uh, by praying. Heavenly Father, as we look to you in death and in our grief, we thank you for the eternal life we have because of our belief in Jesus. And the hope we get from that helps us in our grief and mourning. Thank you also for the Holy Spirit who is with us and is our comforter. And just as in 1 Corinthians 15 verse 42 it says, So it will be with the resurrection of the dead. The body that is sown is perishable. It is raised imperish imperishable. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. And so, Lord, we see your glory and your power, even in death, because of the hope of eternal life. Amen. So, thank you for being with us this evening. Uh, uh, and also, be sure to join us on uh, Sunday, just as we do have the final uh, preaching of this series. So, good night to you all. God bless.